like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars my god i'm already sensing a very strong anointing that means something is going to happen here now in the name of jesus genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created everybody say god created one more time shout it say god created that means every other person he created is also a creator are we together in the beginning god created in the beginning god created in the beginning god created so the bible says that he created the heavens and he created the earth that means within everybody every believer is the ability to change your reality and to change your environment that there is something within men in functioning like god you have the liberty to fade away any scenery in your life that is inconsistent with god's blueprint are we together the bible did not say god explained he said god created the heavens and the earth verse 2 the bible says and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep what does this tell you it means challenges dark days are not unusual even god experienced it in his journey to creation are we together now that you are going to face moments that may not be not so good the bible says the earth for whatever reason was now without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Lesson number three we learn. Never give up on things because they are not working. You are learning to function like God. When there was darkness, God did not run away. Waiting for someone to create light, then he will come back. The Bible says the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of that darkness. Upon the face of that water. The company is not working. Make it work. Don't run away. Are we together now? Anything that is not working, champions, stay until they make it work. Verse 3. The Bible says, and God said. Everybody say, and God said. So we see now that God created. We see that God stayed. Even in the midst of an unfavorable environment. Now the Bible says, God said. That means every spirit he created is a talking spirit. That you create realities by speaking. This is how God functions. God functions by saying. He frames realities by saying. The Bible says, and God said, he did not discuss the prevalent situation. He just said, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. The Bible says, and there was light. Number four, how to function like God. And God saw the power of vision. If you are to function like God, you must have the ability to see. God saw the light. You must see opportunities. God did not see the darkness, even though there was darkness. The Bible says God saw. It matters what you see, not just that you see. It matters what you see. Who is learning now? From verse 1 to 4, I'm showing you how to function like God. That God created. That when there was darkness and chaos and anarchy, he did not run away. He stood there and solved that problem. And that God spoke. He created man to have capacity to speak. And the Bible says God saw. Man can see. God has given every man the power of vision. The ability to see things as they, as they should be. Even if they are good, you can see it better. God saw the light. God saw the light. God saw the light. Who is learning? Very powerful. Most people do not know how to function like God. Let's read one Psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2. If you are learning, shout Amen. Amen. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? Verse 2. It says, my help cometh from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. God is a maker. You know what it means to make? To make means to coordinate resources together to produce something glorious. That's what it means to make. To make is different from creation. God made man. God created man. You can create and you can make. Making requires intelligence. It is beyond speaking. You have to learn the art of bringing together 
all of the systems of advantage, humans, material resources, together. That's how you make. And the Bible called God a maker. God called, I mean, the Bible calls him a maker. That means everyone is a maker. Everyone is a maker. Everyone is a maker. You can produce a glorious life. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Now, the Bible also tells us, like you have learned, that God has, let's go to um, Revelation chapter 4, please, from verse 10 to 11. We are learning how to function like Christ. I'm showing you, he says, the four and twenty elders fell down before him and sat down on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before him, saying, pay attention now, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, help me, and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I like these three words, glory and honor and power. Glory and honor, you are worthy to receive. That means it should be captured in the life of every believer. Glory and honor and power. Say that after me. Glory and honor and power. Glory and honor and power. Everything that makes God, God, his wisdom, glory. Everything that makes God, God, his intelligence, glory. And the Bible says honor and then power found in him. And he must be found in all the saints. The Bible calls God Almighty not only the creator, it calls him the owner and the ruler of everything. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. I'm showing you a few things so that you will see how God functions. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. There you find it again. And the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and is in the earth is thine. Thine is is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Please look at me. Did you ever read in your Bible that we have been raised up with Christ? Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2. That means everything that God has that was invested in Christ, that is now the believer's reality. Listen, you cannot function like God until you know what God has, until you know what God carries, not just who he is, when you talk about who he is, you talk about his nature. But you must know what God has. Because it also belongs to you in Christ. Are we together? It belongs to you in Christ. Paul taught us that we are possessors of this. The Bible calls it inheritance in light. That the saints have an inheritance. And that inheritance is in light. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Bible tells us that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What did God give Jesus as a reflection of himself? He gave Jesus power. He gave Jesus authority. All the saints have power and the saints have authority. But the power and the authority they have is knowledge activated. Are we together? Knowledge activated. There is no mention in the Bible of God functioning in ignorance. That means in ignorance the saints cannot function like God. He dwells in the midst of light. He functions from a standpoint of light. He speaks in light. He acts in light. When the saints dwell and remain in darkness, they are not able to function like God. Now, Psalm 115, please, and verse 16. Let's hurry up. Psalm 115 and verse 16. The heaven, I like this. Even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's. Read with me, Koinonia. One to go. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. One more time. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The real trustee of this earth is everyone who is in Christ. Not everyone who is alive. Everyone who is in Christ. The real trustee of the earth, I repeat, 
is everyone who is in Christ, not everyone who is alive. Let me tell you the truth. When you have these mentalities as a man of God, you know that you have a property somewhere. I don't know where it is, but there is somewhere. You know that the issue of housing is settled in Christ. It is just the wisdom for you to find your portion. But by this revelation, there is, you walk tall, not in pride, but in confidence. Knowing that I may be in a rented apartment today, but in this planet called earth, there is a space for me. I am in Christ. The the earth was willed to Abraham and to his seed, his seed being Christ. And since I am in Christ, I am a beneficiary, a partaker, not just the spiritual blessings, but the estate that was given to Abraham. Apostle, this is a nice word. You don't believe it, you will not have any land, I tell you. Hallelujah. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You have this revelation, you can function that way. You can know that there is a permanent site for Koinonia. You can know that there is a permanent site for every vision. You can know that where you are now, there is a place. I don't know where it is, but I know it is there. This revelation already is helping you function like God. Who is learning? Let me tell you some more how God functions. The Bible says, even God, look up please, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. That means God does not wait for things to manifest before he calls them. He calls them to manifest. You get up in the morning and with the spirit of vision, you begin to design a life using words. You are functioning like God. Do you believe this? Man was created in the image of God and he was created in the likeness of God. Now, there are a few things about man that I need you to know. About four of them, then I will show you three ways, classically, of functioning like Christ and we'll begin to pray. Number one, I've taught you in this place and let me repeat it, that man generally is the legitimate steward of the earth the legitimate steward of the earth is man generally god intended for the earth to come under the stewardship of men but because men have been separated now into fallen men and those who are in christ are we together access to be possessors stewards and custodians of god's property look at me if you have a son and you have a property and someone who is outside of that family wants to lay claim on the property what do you do you get a lawyer because something is wrong am i right on that the prodigal son provided he was within the family he had access to his father's estate when he chose as an act of his will to go out of the family whatever he was given that was all he had he lost everything when he came back into the fold, he now was reintroduced into that covenant of sonship. This is how it is. Make no mistakes about it. The earth may not be in the hands of believers now. It is clear that believers are not the ones who are possessors. And when I talk about the earth, I don't just talk about the landmass. Are we together? I'm not just talking about the landmass. I'm talking of manipulating the mind control systems too. The earth, believers are not supposed to be victims of policies and a modus operandi that is antichrist. It is because we do not understand how to function like Christ. We have been so reduced to a point where we are victims of anything that comes from anywhere. Unfortunately, Satan went ahead of many believers and he's captured the kings and the gatekeepers of the world. And they continue to manipulate the cosmos to come up with policies and come up with things that are antichrist. We are largely victims. But I believe in Jesus' name that things are changing. Amen. There are some of you here, by accessing kingdom influence, God is going to elevate you like Esther and put you at strategic places where you will, you will protect and defend the cause of the kingdom. Who believes what I'm saying? Amen. Refer to my message, Redefining the Coming Revival. I teach you there that the coming revival will be beyond pulpits. 
It will not be the way we have described. It will not just be the campaign of filling stadiums alone. God is going to be raising people strategically and he's going to be keeping them across several places. You will see Esther's in that revival. You will see Daniel's in that revival. It's not only Elijah's you will see. It's not only Paul's that you will see. You will see Gideon's that will arise. You will see Joseph's that will arise. Are we together now? The revival will not come the way we have seen the Welsh and the rest. It will not just be the revival of stadiums and healings and wheelchairs. It will be revivals of changing policies, rising to a point of kingdom influence, where one man can single-handedly protect the cause of Christ across a continent with one policy, one policy, one policy. Let me tell you the truth. Not everybody is going to be a prophet. Not everybody is going to be an apostle. Not everybody is going to be a teacher. And unfortunately, we've marketed this ministry so much that anyone who is not in the fivefold fields is not part of God's program. No. Go and read your Bible. The fivefold without a Daniel will be in trouble. It was because there was nobody in the parliament. And since Daniel was not there, nobody to defend him. If there were enough people in Babylon, they would have said, no, this policy, we cannot see how it applies to Babylon. It is dangerous when we only have Christians in church. It is dangerous for the nation. We must have Christians in the assemblies, in the presidency. Are we together? We must have Christians as CEOs. We must have Christians as policy makers. This is the apostolic model that was left with the church. There was a time the Lord told, the, uh, told Apostle Paul, I think, he said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. Your advantage is number. There are many people who are believers. We need vice chancellors who are men who function like God. Are we together now? We need lecturers who are men who function like God. We need chief medical directors who do not just understand medicine and surgery, but have the anointing. They know how to function like God. Are we together now? We need CEOs who are not just intelligent people counting naira and kobo and dollars, but people who can defend the cause of Christ. If you are one of such, shout a loud amen. When God created man in his image, let me tell you the truth. He did not create man to just attend miracle services and crusades forever. It is a very distorted theology of kingdom advance. A major part of a believer's life should not just be in church and crusade grounds. Church is a training ground. The cosmos is the field. If all we keep doing with all due respect is to bring members and keep pounding them with knowledge without a strategic way of helping them deploy it. Both we, the men of God, and the members will soon be frustrated. What I teach you now, tomorrow you are in your office. By Sunday you are excited to return because you've applied it and you've seen it work. Now coming to church becomes an exciting adventure. What more do I need to learn? I applied this and it worked like fire. I applied the law of honor, functioning like Christ. As a CEO, I, re I redesigned a model and in one week, doors of favor open. Why won't you want to come to church? You would drag all your executives and say, let me tell you, church is not just a place that builds fanatics. It builds intelligent people that the world can apply to nation building. You've, you've heard me. You, you, can, you can literally bring statistics to show that from the time I became a member of this church, look at our productivity. This is the language that will subdue principalities and powers not just blind fanatism it will only work among a few small-minded people but at a macro level it will have no effect on god's program i'm telling you are we together do you realize that there is an intentional plot by hell oh i i wish i have the liberty to tell you the things that are cooking 
that will be unveiled as the days come and it is targeted at the church we have no idea the the spirit of the antichrist because we have refused to learn how to function in the image and the likeness of god darkness is brewing up policies brewing up strategies strategies to destroy schools strategies to destroy an entire generation of children and what are we doing in the church just shouting hallelujah which is important and we are losing our minds and not thinking we are not translating kingdom come intelligently to serve god's purpose but things are changing to function like christ look at me when jesus walked upon the earth i want you to notice how jesus did ministry number one he started by doing all kinds of crusades healing that means if we are to function like christ there must be captured within the church are we together now a people and a platform that allows Christ to be revealed. Do you know what it means to gather 5,000 people aside women and children? It was beyond a crusade. It was a statement that God is alive. It is not all programs that are just for soul winning alone. There are times that there are statements that show the health of the church. That the church is still alive in numbers enough to influence society. Are we together? Number two, we see that Jesus did not shy away from the powers that be. Do you read in the Bible how Jesus interacted with people from an economic standpoint? One person whose economic approach was punishing a lot of people called um, Zacchaeus. Is that not in your Bible? You would think, I hope you know Jesus was not going to his house. Jesus was on his way passing. But when he saw Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house. There must be a space within the church where the purposes of God must be represented in our economic policies. Not just crusades. Our economic policies. How about Nicodemus? Nicodemus was an intellectual. He was a doctor of the law. He came to Jesus by night. I hope you know the whole of John 3.16 was a conversation between Jesus and one intellectual person. We have used it today to save millions of people. But it came as a conversation. There must be a part of the church that relates to the intellectual world. We must know that just because we are anointed, we are not dummies. He's not only a creator, he's the only wise God. Now to the king eternal, it says, the king immortal, the king invincible, he calls him the only wise God. It is in his, he's the fountain of wisdom. 